What is up, everybody? Tyler here. And today I'm going to be giving you my preseason top 30 pool for the 2020 college football season. Now, there are some teams I left off the list, like Iowa, who I think will be a solid team. I just don't think they'll be as good as usual. I left off Virginia Tech, Louisville, SMU, another team that could be really good, returning Shane Bruchel, and TCU. Now, starting the list at number 30, I have Boise State. Now, Boise State returns Hank Brock Bachmeyer, who had a pretty solid season last year. Uh, almost threw for, I think he threw for just over 3,000 yards and over 25 touchdowns. Uh, I expect Boise State to be pretty good, but they their schedule is ridiculously easy. Their toughest games are Florida State and BYU, but they get them at home. So I expect Boise State to have a pretty good record in 2020. Nebraska coming in at number 29. You can say what you want about Nebraska, but they are very talented. They have enough talent to win the Big Ten West. Will they get it done? We'll find out. Scott Frost is on the hot seat, though. Uh, moving on, I have California at 28 and Kentucky at 27. Two teams are kind of similar. Both teams have, are going to have very good defenses. Um, both teams did lose their starting QB, and it, it was really, for both teams, a tough season offensively. But the difference will be Terry Wilson for was uh, for Kentucky and Chase Garbers for Cal. If both these teams, QBs, are healthy, they should be really solid teams. Now moving on, I have Memphis just outside the top 25. Uh, losing Mike Norvell is huge. I expect Brady White, though, to have a solid season. Uh, but losing their head coach was big. Now coming in in my top 25, I have Miami. The Hurricanes are returning uh, a lot of starters on defense. They did lose Quarterman to the NFL, but this defensive line should be very elite. Uh, this is going to be a very solid defense. And adding De'Arid King is huge for Miami. Expect this team to be a lot better than last year. Now coming in at 24, I have Tennessee. The Volunteers. Returning Jared Garantano uh, at QB. I don't actually expect him to be the starter. I do expect it to be Meyer. I'm actually being honest. Uh, or Harrison Bailey. I just think Garantano's not the answer for Tennessee. Maybe they go with the hot freshman. And uh, and Tennessee really loves this guy. And Harrison Bailey. Or maybe they go with Brett Maher. Who, or Maher, who had a pretty solid season last year. And who I think will be the starter in week one. They have a really big game against Oklahoma in week two. We'll see how that goes. 23, I have, since, uh, I have Central Florida. This is a team that I doubt Mackenzie Milton will be playing. That's a huge loss. But they should be relatively better than last year. I know they lost kill Killings, I believe. Um, but this offense should be scoring a lot of points like they did last year. I think the defense will be a little bit better. But anyway, moving on at 22, Iowa State, the Cyclones, returning Brock Purdy, might even be the second best QB to Sam Ellinger in the Big 12. I expect Iowa State to have a better year than last year. Can they finally get over the hump and beat Iowa? We'll see. I expect them to. But anyway, moving on at 21, I have Arizona State. Herm Edwards in his third year at Arizona State should be a good year for Arizona State. Their schedule is not that tough. Utah won't be as good as what they were last year. Um, USC's defense is a little bit questioned, and Oregon will be tough. But anyway, moving on at number 20, I have the Cincinnati Bearcats. Luke Fickle in his, what, fourth year at, at Cincinnati. Two straight top 25 finishes. I expect another. Uh, Ritter, Desmond Ritter should be a lot better this year. Uh, they return a running back, I believe Scott in his senior year. Uh, but yeah, Cincinnati should be very good in 2020. Now moving on at number 19, I have the Wisconsin Badgers. Yeah, the Badgers uh, coming off a pretty solid season going 10-4. and four. Um, Losing Jonathan Taylor was huge. Zach Braun, two of their biggest leaders. Uh, this team, I believe, is going to have a great defense. I don't know about that offense. Jack Cohn, he's got to be uh, a lot better if they want to be where they were last year. Number 18, another team from the Big Ten West. I have the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Tanner Morgan, uh, P.J. Fleck, this team rowing their boat. I expect this team to be pretty good. I don't know if they'll be as good as last year, mainly because their schedule is a little bit trickier this year. They do get uh, Michigan. Uh, at home, 
that should be in the middle of the year. That might be tough for them. Uh, they do have to play Wisconsin and uh, uh, North uh, Nebraska, two very good teams. Uh, I believe they both. I believe I believe they play them at home. But anyway, moving on at number seventeen, I have North Carolina. Sam Howell. This team should be very good offensively, even defensively. I mean, this was a very young team last year. Was able to win seven games, losing six by just less than seven points per game. Uh, yeah, that's pretty impressive. Uh, they really could have been a lot better, but they had nine total games uh, that came down to the last pos or one possession. Moving on at number sixteen, I have the USC Trojans. Uh, this team's going to have a very, very good offense. Kendon Slovis, kind of a surpriser from last year. Uh, you know, he was a third or fourth string QB coming into the season. Ended up um, all those injuries, the Fink, JT Daniels. Uh, but this team should be a little bit better offensively, mainly because Slovis is going to get going in his second year. And the difference in this team is going to be the defense. Will their defense be better? Hopefully. If they want to be as good as where they want to be. Now, 15th, I have Michigan. Michigan's a very talented team, don't get me wrong. But they just can't get over that hump against Ohio State. They did lose Shea Patterson. He wasn't the best QB, but he wasn't the worst. Um, in, in their big game against Ohio State, he actually didn't play that bad. I think he had over 300 yards passing and a couple touchdowns. Had a couple turnovers. But, I mean, Michigan's defense was terrible that game. That was their only outlier on defense. Expect Michigan to be a little bit better uh, offensively, actually, I do expect Joe Milton or Dylan McCaffrey, maybe even both, to be the starter, to be very good this year. I expect Dylan McCaffrey to be the starter. I'm very high on Dylan McCaffrey. Watch out for Michigan. This could be a surprising team in 2020. Now moving on, at number 14, I have Oklahoma State, one of the best trios in the country. Uh, they have Spencer Sanders, Chuba Hubbard, and Tylen Wallace. Relatively easier schedule than usual. They get their non-conference against Oregon State. That should not be the toughest. They do have to play Texas, but do get them at home. That's huge. Uh, playing Oklahoma State middle of the year is weird. I believe you play at home. So you do get an easier uh, conference schedule there. But anyway, moving on at number 13, I have the Auburn Tigers. Auburn should be a lot better offensively, depending on how good or bad Bo Nix is. I expect them to. I expect him to be a lot better. Um, their defense, returning every one of their linebackers, or every one of their starting linebackers. So I expect their defense to be good. Maybe not as good as last year. That defensive line was amazing. Big Cat Bryant, look out for him. Surprising. Uh, he might be a surpriser. Anyway, moving on. Texas at number 12. Yes, the Longhorns had a pretty bad season they finished the year against Utah a top uh, maybe I'm not even gonna I don't even think they were a top 10 team then but uh, a pretty good Utah team destroyed them in Alamo Bowl game wasn't close that's how Texas should have looked in every one of their games last year they were the better team or they had the better roster in just about every game except for the LSU game that will be about the same this year they do play on the road against LSU that should be tough but you got to look at that roster talent that talent is one of the best in the country. You should not be losing to teams like TCU and, and uh, almost losing a game to Kansas. It's kind of embarrassing. Every one of Texas's games were pretty much close last year. But anyway, moving on, another team from Texas have Texas A&M. Uh, yeah, the Aggies should be better this year, and I'm talking about the record. Uh, that first eight schedule is ridiculous. First eight games is ridiculously easy at. Mississippi State might be their toughest game. Actually, at South Carolina might be a little bit tougher. Uh, but this A&M team should be a lot better on offense. I expect Kellamon to have a much better season than last year. Uh, I expect him to be more consistent. If if he is consistent, this A&M team could be one of the best teams in the country. Watch out for A&M. Uh, they could be a surpriser in 2020. Now, coming in at number 10, I have the Oregon Ducks. This team should be very good defensively, maybe even better than last year. Should be a top five defense. Uh, offensively, they got to be more consistent than last season. Tyler Slow, we don't know enough about him. Oregon fans are crazy about him. Again, I don't know how good or bad he will be. Schedule isn't the toughest. You do have to play Ohio State at home, and you do play Cal on the road. That will be your toughest road game. Do have USC at home, but then again, uh, really, your toughest games are at home. Anyway, moving on. Number nine, Oklahoma. This is a team that everyone kind of hates seeing in the playoffs or kind of loves. Depends if your team's playing them because it's an automatic win, it seems. 
Uh, this is a team that's coming off a 63 to 28 loss to LSU in the Peach Bowl. How embarrassing that was. Uh, they do add uh, Spencer Rattler. He will be the QB for OU, more than likely. Uh, did lose Jaden Hazelwood. It's a big loss. Uh, everyone thought he was going to have a breakout year for OU. Uh, as well, they did lose C.D. Lamb to the NFL Draft and Kenneth Murray, who was their best defensive player. Defense will decide the season for OU, but as of right now, I have him, I have him as number nine. At number eight, I have Notre Dame. Notre Dame, the Fighting Irish, their schedule probably as tricky as last year. Instead of on the road against Georgia, you get Clemson at home. So I expect I do expect that to be a good game, but obviously Clemson will be the favorite. And then you do get instead of Michigan, you get Wisconsin, who's not as, I don't think will be as good as Michigan was last year. Um, and you get them in a neutral siding game in Lambeau Field. This the, the the season depends on that Clemson game. Obviously, you can't be looking ahead. You can't you can't find a way to lose a game before then. Um, but we'll see. And then at number seven, I have Florida, the Gators. Coming off a pretty good season last year when 11 and 2 won a New Year's Six game um, against Virginia. Very close game, but I expect the Gators to be very good this year. Um, their schedule is not the trickiest. It's not the hardest, though. Um, they do play, you know, Kentucky at home. That won't be easy. They do play LSU at home. That won't be easy. On the road against Tennessee in that Georgia game. Georgia game depends Florida's season. I'm just telling you that right now. Moving on at number six, I have Penn State and the Nittany Lions. Returning Sean Clifford, Noah Kane, and Journey Brown. Journey Brown's going to be amazing. He's one of he's a Heisman sleeper. I'm telling you that right now. Uh, that group of running backs is pretty elite, at least in my opinion. Uh, Penn State's defense should be pretty good, and their schedule instead of Pittsburgh, they do get Virginia Tech, and that's a road game. I believe that's a Week Two game. Uh, but anyway, that Ohio State game, it will be huge. Should be a night game in Happy Valley. Two very good teams, probably two top six or seven teams. We'll see. They do have to play Michigan on the road this year. That will be tricky. But anyway, I have Penn State at number six. Now, my top five. At number five, I have the former national champions, LSU Tigers. This team is very talented, uh, but this team will be just as good as Miles Brennan. Will Miles Brennan be as good as Burrow? Probably not. Let me, let's just be honest here. He's not. Uh, we haven't seen him play though. Uh, in the times that we did see him play, he actually wasn't bad that last year, uh, but he's going to be, he's expected to be the man uh, under center for LSU. Their defense, bringing back Derek Stingley's huge. Their defensive backs are very good at LSU, and I expect uh, their defense to be pretty good again. Uh, this is a very talented team. Like I said, this team is actually probably a top five team just based off of talent, so look out for LSU. At number four, another SEC team. How about the Georgia Bulldogs? This is a Georgia team that only scored 25.25 points per game in SEC play last year embarrassing if you if you get rid of those Tennessee and Vanderbilt games I mean they barely scored 20 points per game ridiculous I expect this offense to be a lot better than last year I expect this Georgia team to be very good uh, probably going to win I, I do expect them to win the East I'm just telling you that right now um, and I also expect the defense to be the best in the country uh, returning eight out of 11 starters from last year on the defense yeah, Georgia's going to be very, very good. Now, the la the final SEC team I have is at number three, and that's Alabama. One of the most talented teams, if not the most talented team in the country, is Alabama. If you just base it off recruiting, this team, since 2016, has an average recruiting ranking of 2.2. Second place team is Georgia at 2.8. Everyone else is over four. So they're recruiting really well, obviously. Nick Saban, that's what he does. Uh, he returns Mac Jones at QB. I expect him to be the starter week one. Don't know if he'll finish the season. I do expect Bryce Young to have a lot of playing time this year. Uh, but this is an Alabama team that gets their key to their defense, Dylan Moses, back. I expect a huge season out of Alabama's defense. This team should be a top five talented, or this team should be top five in defense. At number two, the Ohio State University I have as Justin Fields might be the most talented QB returning this year. I actually think that. He had an amazing season, just three interceptions. How about that? Uh, had over 40 touchdowns. 
Uh, this guy was a machine. I expect him to have a really good season this year. Get Garrett Wilson back, one of the better wide receivers in the country. Uh, he was He's now a sophomore, I believe. And then Wade, Sean Wade, one of the best defensive backs in the country. Huge that defense, obviously losing Chase Young. But I expect this defense to be very good. And finally, clearly at number one, the Clemson Tigers. Uh, Clemson returning Travis Etienne. That was probably their biggest uh, return. Uh, and he's definitely the talent, most talented running back uh, after a 1,600-yard rushing year at Clemson. I mean, that's just ridiculous. And he barely even uh, played majority majority of the games. He only played the first half and averaged just about 14 carries per game. That's ridiculous numbers. Uh, but Clemson is going to be very, very good on both sides of the ball. Brent Venables, I, I know he lost... Every one of his defensive backs, they're starting defensive backs, but this Clemson defense is going to be very good. Their front seven is elite. Might even be the front best front seven in the country. And obviously, just uh, Trevor Lawrence, sorry. He will have an amazing, I expect him to have an amazing season. Uh, probably much better than last year, at, like, at least how he started. He started terrible last year, uh, but I expect him to be more consistent. And in his last year, this is going to be the team to beat. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, comment down below who do you think I have way too high, way too low. Who am I missing in my top 30? Uh, who do you disagree with? I know a lot of people might not dis uh, agree with A&M, maybe even Florida. Heck, maybe even Michigan being at 15. I know a lot of Michigan fans actually don't see them as a top 15 team. But thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.